How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing, always protect your profits. And today we're going to go over Lucid and as well as for SoFi. We saw a lot of volatility in the market today. We know that we had the Fed minutes that came out. So we're going to go over these charts and see what they look like going into tomorrow. Let's start off with Lucid. So we ended up closing at $18.46 being down 2.48%. On the low it tested $18.15 and then on the high testing $18.79. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 10.735 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 18.506 million shares. So we had below average volume on the day and we also saw a pullback in the stock. So when we take a look at our chart, which is a daily chart, the first thing that we notice, we are trading below all of our major moving averages, which is the 50 EMA, the 21 EMA, and as well as the 9 EMA. So knowing that we close below these averages going into tomorrow, we want to see some strength, most preferably above the 21 day EMA, which is at $18.72. We did see a high at $18.79, but if we're able to break above that, then we can see we can make that move going to the 50 EMA at $18.95, which would be a bullish look for the stock. One thing that is clear in the past, you can see that we have had resistance at the 50 EMA, so we want to get a break above that level. Another thing to take into consideration, if we continue to have a pullback, where can Lucid possibly go? So first, you want to see if it can hold up support at $18. If it can't hold support at $18, that's where we can have Lucid pulling back to that $17.80 range or that $17.70 range. We know this is a well-known area that Lucid has been able to bounce off of, but we did have some strong selling that happened on the 9th where we got to as low as $17.15. We also have to take into consideration for today, we ended up having a lower high than we had on the previous day. We were gaining some momentum, forming some higher highs for the past two trading days. So knowing that that pattern broke, it's going to be very interesting to see what Lucid does going into tomorrow. So let's see and find out. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for Lucid. So scrolling down on the page, green rows indicate new positions, while red rows indicate closed positions. So when we take a look at the recent filings we have here, which are mainly closed positions for the 17th. We have Nomura Holdings Inc. that went in with calls and as well as puts and they've been closed. We also have Castle View Partners LLC that closed their position. We also have Parallax Volatility Advisors that closed their puts, their calls, and as well as their share position. Now, when we take a look at the short interest, the off exchange short volume ratio is at 54.96%. And then for the off exchange short volume, it is just over 3.04 million shares. Scrolling down on the page short shares availability is at 650,000 updated 26 minutes ago and then for the short buyout fee rate it is at 10.27 percent when we take a look at the history of the short volume we can see for the close of the 15th it is at 52.03 and then for the close of the 16th being at 54.96 so that is a significant increase right there and then when we take a look at the short interest percentage of the float being at 21.02 percent lucid does continue to have short squeeze potential potential. Let's take a look at the chart for SoFi. So it ended up closing at $6.88, being down 9.23%. On the low, it tested $6.82, and then on the high, testing $7.45. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 74.9 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 52.879 million shares. So you can see that we did have above average volume on the day, and we saw a pullback in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is a daily chart, like I've been mentioning in my previous videos, SoFi does have a gap that needs to be filled at $6.64. And with the price action that we got today, it looks like SoFi is going to be filling that in going into tomorrow. So I hope you guys were able to add that to your notes and also take advantage of that opportunity that was presented. You also do clearly see that we are trading below all of our major moving averages, which is a 9 EMA to 21 EMA, and as well as a 50 EMA. EMA, so of course that is bearish. So that's why when we fill in that gap, if we drop a little bit further, we want to see some strength at $6.50. We want to see some bulls stepping in. Now, as far as for our turnaround, you want to see a move to the upside. Then of course, we ended up seeing a high at $7.45. So of course, you'd want to see SoFi being able to get back to at least $7. If it's able to actually come back to the 21 EMA at $7.19, that would be a great look as well. And if it could hold, 
then we can look forward to seeing a further move to the upside, seeing if we can break above the 9 EMA at $7.40. But in my personal opinion, I could see this bearish trend continuing. This is quite the candle that we had overall on the day. And you could also see the trend that we have in regards to forming lower lows and as well as lower highs. So of course, this is bearish. So let's move on to the short interest. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for SoFi. So scrolling down on the page, green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So when we take a look at the recent filings for the 17th, we have Nomura Holdings Inc. that close out their positions. Now, when we take a look at the short interest, the off exchange short volume ratio is at 46.24%, and then for the off exchange short volume, it is just over 13.70 million shares. Scrolling down on the page, the short shares availability is at 10 million, updated just now, and then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 1.26%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume, you can see for the close of the 15th, it is at 44.75, and then for the close of the 16th, it is at 46.24. So it did go up, and then when we take a look at the short interest percentage of the float being at 17.06 percent SoFi does continue to have short squeeze potential so that pretty much sums up the video for you guys so in regards to lucid and as well as for SoFi we did have a pullback inside of the market and of course many stocks followed along with it we also do know that SoFi has a gap that needs to be filled to the downside it hasn't filled it in as of yet but it's looking very likely it's going to be able to do this this week and I think this is very helpful for the stock because it does give an opportunity for bulls wanting to step in who are maybe being a little bit cautious due to that gap itself so that's why you want to continue to keep the play on close watch but we know that SoFi does move alongside with the market so if the market decides to turn around and pick back up we're expecting to see that from SoFi and in regards to Lucid we know that Lucid is in the Nasdaq 100 so it does move alongside with tech so you want to be keeping a very close eye on that making sure that you also have Tesla on your watch list because there's many Many instances where we could see similarities between the both of them and this goes for all the other EV plays inside of the tech sector as well and another point that we can't forget to talk about is the Fed minutes they're going to be going through with 75 basis points that is what is on the agenda so this will have an impact on the market as a whole so you want to make sure that you're not surprised you're prepared you're looking at your portfolio examining your positions and making the right decision that is the best for you and if you are a trader you want to look for those opportunities for the calls and as well as the puts by paying attention to the levels that I discuss in this video. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you found a lot of value in this video, hit the like button. I'll talk to you guys soon.